Hello learners, welcome to this video presentation. I am Professor K. Srinivas working with NEPA, New Delhi. I am head of ICT and project management unit and my expertise is on MOOCs, online teaching learning, and online pedagogies. In today's topic, I will be talking about uh, the technology used in higher education and operational strategies. This is with reference to the new educational policy 2020. We all know very well that uh, Digital India campaign is uh, helping to transform the entire nation into a digitally empowered society and the knowledge economy. Educational technology especially will play an important role uh, in the improvement of educational processes and the outcomes. If you look at this technology, of course we have been using this technology word so often uh, in our educational uh, plan policy also. The effectiveness of the technology is directly proportional to the competence, intent and the attitude of the uh, user. So competence building is very important, positive intent, developing the positive intent and right attitude are a key for the successful integration of technology in the teaching learning process. Also, the relationship between the technology and the education at all the levels is bidirectional. And uh, as you know, the extensive use of technology in teaching and learning, removing language barriers, increasing access for the young students and educational planning and administration are some of the key factors uh, which will be doing it. Uh, before I proceed further, uh, let me focus some uh, light on the new educational policy uh, factors. Uh, the new educational policy 2020 recognizes the importance and of leveraging the advantages of technology while acknowledging its potential risks and dangers. It calls for carefully designed and appropriate scaled pilot studies to determine how the benefits of online oblique digital education uh, can be reaped while addressing or mitigating the downsides. And there you, as you know that there are so many digital platforms and ongoing ICT based education initiatives are available may it be Swayam, Swayam Prabha, National Digital, National digital Platform, EPG Partshala and so on and so forth must be optimized and expanded to meet the current and future challenges in improving quality education for all. Apart from this, uh, one more important issue I wish to flag is uh, strategically various uh, technological applications uh, practicing and using in uh, teaching and learning example of like uh, video lecturing, mobile learning and various learning management systems like Moodle, Canvas and so on and so forth. So much social media, open educational resources, I think one of the untapped uh, area and of course massive open online courses, learning analytics, all these things play a major major role as far as this is concerned. And also uh, we need to ensure the equitable use of these uh, technologies for uh, quality uh, learning. The teachers require suitable training and development to be effective online educators. There is a lot of gap uh, of uh, using the technology in teaching and learning process thanks to this COVID uh, environment. Many of the teachers have moved towards the online mode of teaching. Uh, but the online mode of teaching means basically they are using the synchronous platforms like Zoom, Google Meet uh, and so on and so forth. But uh, there is a definite need of uh, using the asynchronous learning environment which are going to support the beyond the classroom activities and support. And at the same time the assessments also going to be should be having a different uh, approach as such. So the NEP 2020 is also envisaged that the existing e-learning platforms like Diksha, Swayam and so on and so forth will also be leveraged for uh, creating virtual labs so that all students have equal access to quality, practical and hands-on experiment based learning experiences. One important factor I wish to bring your kind attention here is uh, 
the the uh, the effectiveness of the technology as as again rightly mentioned uh, directly uh, connected with the three important aspects like competence building and building the right intent and uh, attitude the another important uh, four quadrant approach i wish to draw your kind attention is about uh, every teacher wants to make the process of learning impactful engaging interesting and challenging so with the help of technology and uh, technological integration in the teaching learning process how do we build these two these processes in, in into that that is a very key which we need to achieve in uh, in the uh, in this days to come if you look at the thrust of technological interventions uh, the, um, which was envisaged uh, in our new educational policy it may be teaching learning and evaluation processes again this is again going to be a very very important uh, change um, supporting teachers preparation preparedness and the professional development uh, because only professional teachers can only uh, you know uh, do a lot of justice and that too when we when we all of us moved from the conventional classroom based teaching to the online mode of teaching now it is being moved towards the blended approach where we have uh, offline mode of teaching and online mode of teaching and the supporting teachers preparedness is very 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 important factor and also also enhancing the educational access access to divyang students uh, removing the language barriers streamlining educational management and administration one small important uh, change uh, what we have started noticing during this two years of online teaching is the teacher and the teaching learning process earlier it was confined to the four walls of the classroom has moved to the living rooms of the children so so not only the students not only their their parents also started watching us their uh, um, their spouse and uh, their other members everybody started watching us so what are the areas which they are looking for number one the teachers professional competency that means the domain expertise uh, will be visible to all of us second thing is pedagogical expertise what are the pedagogical approaches he is using to bring because we have so much in diversity in the classroom slow learners average learners gifted learners introverts extroverts so many things are there and also the technological expertise and uh, you know then then also comes the three p's the passion the patience and the perseverance and and uh, the the thorough uh, theoretical understanding and uh, the technological uh, uh, understanding of the ecosystem uh, may it be a um, blended mode of teaching may it be online classes may it be uh, mooc courses or online courses so these things are very much uh, is earlier it was confined to only four walls of the classroom now so when and for the last two years one more thing which is which i wish to bring to your kind attention is about the the quality consciousness of the parents and the students and so on and so forth so in this context the role of technology is going to be a major key element which which we are going to uh, do it here and uh, the thrust of the technological interventions if you look at uh, so of course the disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence which is going to make a major change in um, and major recommendation and is going to change the teaching learning and assessment process which we have been doing and of course 3d 7d virtual reality has emerged uh, also the extensive research is also needed in the new technologies which involving the artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain smart boards handheld computing devices adaptive computer testing and other forms of educational and software uh, hardware it's not only an hardware part or a software part again and again i wish to emphasize that human wear component is also going to play a major role uh, so 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 that if all three sides of the triangle are in order then 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 the things will be we can we can get the desired output as such so the another important uh, thrust of technological intervention is before scaling up of interventions the use and integration of technologies to improve multiple aspects of education should be rigorously and transparently evaluated in relevant this is a very important aspects to be taken into consideration 
there are so much uh, artificial intelligence applications are available there and many uh, startups and many, uh, many educational technology firms have uh, come up with so much solutions. But again, uh, this has to be reached to the school level and the college level and, and, the, the, and, and the last student also can take the advantage of that, then only we can have uh, this process as such. If you look at the adoption of this emerging technologies, uh, and uh, like uh, the artificial intelligence, the robotics, then 3D simulations and other computing. And of course, the, uh, the educational uh, policy has talked about uh, three important things. One is about National Educational Technology Forum. And this is basically to categorize the emergent technologies based on their potential. Of course, they will be they will be meeting with the Ministry of Education, which recommend NET, NEP, um, NARFs to take take up further research on the identified areas, and of course, it will be feeding that in inputs to the National Research Foundation. Uh, if you look at in detail about uh, National Educational Technology Forum, and it basically advises the central and state governments to use of technology in education. Use of technology, now uh, you, if, if you must have noticed uh, the current trend which we have been using, of course, uh, we st uh, most of the teachers and students have comfortably uh, got, got into the, uh, the synchronous uh, learning uh, environments like Zoom, Google Meet, uh, Jitsi and uh, so on and so forth. But what is more important is beyond the classroom support and uh, the schedule. So that you know, many students because of their uh, networking issues or hardware issues or anything, so they could able to access the uh, recorded lectures, pre-recorded lectures, simulations, which is being provided to the provided by the teacher to the classroom, uh, so that uh, beyond the class they could able to learn. As you know very well that every student's learning pace, learning space, learning time is different. So if you can provide uh, these resources and uh, you know either could be before the classroom or after the classroom and one of the biggest advantage is uh, the students will take the um, you know learning. So to do this uh, the teachers has to play a major major role because the transformation has to happen because we are moving from the uh, push mode of a learning to the pull mode of a learning. Uh, where uh, a teacher is going to set up the environment uh, in this regard, uh, where, are, where the, 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 the teacher has to convince the learners uh, saying that yes, this could, be, this could be helpful for them, like the resources are available 24 by 7 and the scaffolding of the teacher will be available and uh, learning problems which is connecting to the external real world which could be very much helpful for them. And at the same time, uh, the, there is a collaborative learning environment where not only from the teacher, uh, the learners learning from their uh, the peers also. So then, then that could be connected with the classroom mode of teaching. So that, that's what uh, our educational policy is talking about, uh, the blended mode of teaching. Uh, I mean to say here, the blended the blending of the teaching learning experiences. That's the point uh, which I wish to emphasize. The second point is build intellectual and institutional capabilities in educational technology. It cannot happen overnight and a lot of effort need to be, and we had to take the confidence of the teachers, we have to take the confidence of the uh, academic administrators, we have to take the confidence of the uh, learners uh, so that to implement uh, these ideas uh, in letter and spirit. And also articulate new directions for the research and innovation. Lot of research is required to be done. Lot of practitioners are there in, 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 in this country. So a lot of work is being done. So their services are going to be also used in this regard as such. If you look at the developmental aspect, uh, you know, of course, uh, uh, you know, in, in the both school education and higher education, for example, in the school education, uh, there, is, there, is, there is a Diksha platform, Nishta platform, and of course, the uh, for Swayam platforms are available. Uh, the Arpit courses are very much in demand and very good quality institutions, very good quality courses are going to be um, prepared and, and available for the public domain. Uh, Diksha and Swayam will be better 
better integrated across the school and higher education uh, systems and, and also we need to promote and expand Diksha um, as well as other educational technology initiatives uh, to more extent possible. And a rich variety of educational softwares in all major Indian languages and will also be accessed to Divyang student. This is a very good uh, demand and a lot of effort is going on in this regard. And teaching learning content uh, uploaded into the Diksha, Swayam, Arpit platforms are already available there. And, uh, and uh, these courses are available in two platforms. Uh, if you look at the Swayam courses, of course, there are scheduled courses and there are self-paced courses. I think uh, this is the need and it should be integrated. And the new educational policy is also talking about up to 40% of the credit students can take uh, from these platforms. Uh, suitable equipment uh, for but uh, suitably integrated e-contents into the teaching learning process. So the, 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 the point which I just want to emphasize here is not necessarily in the first instance we have to develop the content. So the excellent uh, um, uh, content is available in the form of uh, open educational resources like Creative Commons material prepared by the top class institutions across the world. Even of course our NPTEL is also providing an excellent material. Apart from this, we have excellent uh, digital initiatives of Government of India uh, developed in, in, in terms of uh, NME ICT. Uh, so uh, like Swayam, Swayam Prabha, National Digital Library, EPG Patshala, FOSSI, Sakshat and so on and so forth. And we NEPA also developed an excellent platform for the digital uh, uh, educational content uh, which was uh, so, so much is available. I think uh, we need to promote that how to use this content in their blended mode of teaching. So uh, then, then if the content is not suitable as per their uh, expected learning outcomes, yes. And we need to promote uh, how to use the simple and easy to use technological tools uh, to develop the content as such. And uh, very, very importantly, the role of higher education institutions in this regard is very, very important. And they need to play an active role in uh, conducting the research on uh, uh, disruptional versions of instructional material courses, including online courses and assessing their impact on uh, specific areas. And of course, the, the discussion forum, because these courses are being designed, developed and delivered in four quadrant approach like e-tutorials, e-content, uh, discussion forum and of course the uh, assessment. So what is important is uh, which of the areas uh, the, the students are lacking, the faculty members are facing difficulty so that you know the, the research will be definitely helpful in this area. The higher education institutions will conduct targeted training for job readiness and address skilling, de-skilling and scaling, uh, keeping you of the disruptive technologies. And I, I must believe in one thing, the training should be outcome based and hands on based. And it's not uh, in the number of days. What is important is what type of extended hand holding support will be promoted, provided to the people. At the same time, we wish to see that how do we motivate the learner, how do we engage the learner, how do we encourage the learner so that he or she can take this one and, and so that he can he or she can prepare for the to meet the external real world situations. Uh, that, that's very much important. Universities will also aim to offer PhD in master's program in core areas such as machine learning as well as in uh, multidisciplinary fields of AI plus X and so on and so forth. And of course, uh, the, the school education and uh, continuing education, of course, the higher education will assist in raising the general populace awareness about the potentials and uh, effectiveness of disruptive technologies to facilitate informed choice and consent. Uh, we have one of the best example of uh, the Alexa, which we are Amazon Alexa, which we have been using, which is a wonderfully demonstrated AI tool. And even our browsers are also AI compatible in slowly and steadily these things unless and until we have the data. And so much uh, work is also going on on, uh, on uh, using the artificial intelligence in uh, um, assessment and in other so on and so forth areas. And the study of current affairs and ethical issues will include a discussion on disruptive technologies, appropriate instructional and discussion material will also be prepared for uh, again uh, all these levels of schooling, school education to the higher education. 
and and very very important is it is critical to raise awareness on issues of privacy laws standards and ethical issues associated with the ai based data handling and data production uh, etc as such and our nep 2020 is also recognizes the importance of leveraging the advantages of technology while acknowledging the potential risks and dangers and carefully designed and appropriate scaled pilot projects to determine the benefits of digital online education and optimizing and expanding the existing digital platforms and ongoing ICT based educational initiatives to meet the current needs and future challenges so much has been done in in terms of ICT enabled processes which i just narrated few minutes back about uh, the technology mediated teaching learning process uh, so that i think we should use those material and uh, to the extent possible using technology for online and digital education adequately to address concerns of equity but at the same time so so there is so much scope uh, but what are the things which we need to focus on the hardware issues like uh, you know many cases uh, smartphones are being used but smartphone is a very good tool to receive the communication but uh, if 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 it is being used and of course taking some levels of the assessment but if it is going beyond that it will be very difficult to manage it and uh, similarly the the softwares also the softwares uh, may be useful for the Uh, providing the synchronous mode of learning and of course a synchronous mode like moodle uh, google classroom of course the google classroom and moodle are being used extensively during uh, this two years of uh, uh, the corona pandemic period um, but 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 still the quality uh, option are still there we should we should work on that and and of course many other applications are also being uh, supported uh, in this regard as such if you look at the online and uh, digital education there are of course uh, apart from the possible these there are certain challenges also uh, first and foremost thing uh, i should start with the digital competencies of teachers to meet the further needs the digital competencies one should start with uh, how to effectively use the uh, the cloud based uh, storage like uh, google drive dropbox one drive effective utilization like how to create the folder how to share the content over there and how to disseminate the content uh, so that what happened we need not uh, put a stress on the uh, the learning management systems or the platforms uh, to work on that and 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 it's not a theoretical part and now coming to the content again Uh, so i in my opinion i divide the con- uh, content video content or text content into two parts one is a core resources the other one is a supplementary resources excellent tools like uh, screencastify and uh, you know uh, um, and uh, many other tools like obs are available so that you can prepare a good quality uh, interactive content can be prepared the the tools like h5e lumi Uh, and these are all uh, tools which uh, will facilitate uh, uh, the teachers to provide a good quality so what is more important apart from uh, the technological and digital competencies we need to provide the enough uh, environment for the teachers and we need to motivate them engage them and encourage them uh, so that you know that their creativity and definitely will come out and they will do the needful as such the another issue is unavailability of open and public digital resource infrastructure yes of course still um, of so many years uh, very less usage of open educational resources the creative commons uh, uh, content uh, is being used and still the people have been talking about uh, you know whether there is an intellectual property rights but so so that Uh, that awareness need to be provided uh, to the people to the extent possible so that instead of creating the content in the first instance they can use a good quality supplementary reading material which can be able to use it uh, third important point is limitation in delivering certain type of courses of subjects in online and digital space yes this is again a, a big debatable issue uh but the, the the point is that uh, everything cannot be delivered in online yes definitely we required a blended mode approach so so i think we need to we need to explore the possibilities to see that uh, uh, how this um, how this 
some specific courses and subjects can be delivered uh, using online and digital space. Assessment is a big issue because uh, now, now we have been talking about the blended mode of an approach. So, so blending of the experiences uh, like, uh, so we want to see that uh, when, when, when the student comes in contact, face to face contact, they can have a um, pen and paper examination, they can have a small group activities, they can have a large group activities. But when it comes to the online mode using the ICT tools or a learning management systems or, uh, or any other tools. So we had to define uh, that what type of assessments are going to be and it, it's, it's only to promote and to see that what best a student can able to learn and also to see that uh, what type of support is required to be provided to the students in this regard if at all if he is not performing well. And, uh, uh, and of course, uh, we have uh, online and digital education, the, the way forward is we need to have a suitable uh, teacher training prepared uh, teachers as effective online educators. This is a very, very important uh, and, and of course change in pedagogy for the online and digital education. The conventional pedagogical approach will not work here. Uh, we had to work seriously into that. Online assessment in different approach, blended approach with online and experiential learning which is a very key. Uh, leveraging existing platforms for creating virtual labs, uh, educational programs to be made available 24 by 7 in different languages so that it can reach uh, all the uh, learners. Availability of affordable computing devices to eliminate the digital device. Optimize and expand existing digital platforms and ICT based uh, solutions. Provide two-way audio and video interface for holding online classes. Um, so, so these are the key digital online and digital education initiatives which was uh, uh, talked in the NEP starting from the pilot studies on online education to the online assessment examination addressing the digital divide to the laying the down the uh, standards. Uh, as far as the implementation strategies are concerned, yes, continuous customization of architecture is very much, digital architecture is very important. Design development rolled out of MOOCs for students and teachers with uh, appropriate policy evaluation, certifications and credit transfer. Dissemination of digital content to multiple modes, this is very, very important. Uh, collaboration and coordination with the national and state level institutions for uh, uh, convergings of efforts. And very importantly, conduct research on disruptive technologies uh, on ICT implementation. Uh, of course, we have made some um, uh, recommendations in this regard. Uh, there, are, there are good quality free open source tools are available. Uh, for example, if you want to use the asynchronous learning environment Moodle, the Genomeo Moodle is very much available and it's available in the cloud platform. We could able to use and, uh, and uh, you can upload the courses and we can conduct the programs uh, hassle free. And uh, apart from that, of course, good quality open educational resources are available and good quality digital content available in the digital initiatives are available and simple to use open source uh, uh, video editing tools are also available. I think these are all the things which are very much important uh, uh, to be used uh, to uh, for the technology integration in the higher education and, and, and in this regard uh, these, these are all the things I wish to say as far as the operationalization of the strategies of uh, using the technology in the higher education. Thank you very much.